Now, the UK is suffering from a huge housing shortage, and could that be the key to winning the next general election? Well, Sir Keir Starmer and the Labour Party are targeting dozens of seats where people are significantly more pro-development than your average common or garden voter. And it marks one of the clearest political divides with the Conservatives thus far, with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak facing criticism from his own backbenchers for scrapping house building targets. Well, I'm joined now in our Westminster studio by the property consultant and political commentator, Russell Quirk. Russell, thank you very much for coming into the studio. Fair to say you're not ordinarily Sir Keir Starmer or Labour Party's biggest fan, but you like this idea. Tell me why. I do, yeah. I wouldn't normally be associated with Keir Starmer or the Labour Party, but look, I think you have to give credit where credit's due. I think yeah. it's very easy to be partisan and to say anything that Labour say is wrong and anything that Conservatives say is right, although I'm probably between those two stalls, frankly, politically at the moment. Um, but look, it's about time that a government and politicians got serious about house building. Mm. We've spent literally as far back as I can remember talking about the lack of house building, the fact that governments and developers and so on, do not build enough homes. And there's all sorts of reasons to that. What Keir Starmer has announced, and actually with some political risk, I have to say, is that despite the fact that a lot of the constituencies that he's targeting are saying, actually, we're fairly pro-house building, it's going to rub a lot of people up the wrong way. And, and believe me, it has. You know, I was uh, sparring with you, I think, or yes. uh, talking to you on Twitter earlier on, and I was absolutely rounded upon by what we call NIMBYs, the not-in-my-backyards, that don't want to see development, it seems, anywhere at any time. One wonders how on earth they think they manage to buy the house that they themselves live in, or indeed where their kids and their grandchildren are going to live. So I think the Keir Starmer sense, which is to say there are elements of the green belt, bearing yeah. in mind the green belt was classified back in the 1950s, that might not be very green. And on that basis, skip yards, industrial estates, old car parks and so on, shouldn't we reclassify those bits and build on them? See, that's the common conception, isn't it, that the green belt is the Cotswolds, it's the rolling Jerusalem, the chocolate box, and yeah. we can't possibly build on that. And yet, tell me about some of the developments that you mentioned that you've got on your books. Yeah. They're called green belt, but they're not. Cotswold countryside, no, aren't no, it, it is. So a, a, lot of, a lot of development within the Green Belt, which is now dilapidated, of course, predates the Green Belt classification from the 1950s. So, you know, I'm dealing right now in Brentwood and Essex, where I live, with a, a planning matter which has been received by the planning authority as an automatic no, but it's an old scrap and skipyard in the middle of the countryside backing onto a golf course, which is, frankly, worse than dilapidated, full of household rubbish because it's been tipped on for years and years and years. The best thing for it, apart from allowing gypsies and travellers on it, frankly, which is a whole different debate, I know, mm. uh, rather than leaving it to fester as it is, even though it's in the green belt, we should take a common sense approach to that particular piece of land and allow some nice houses to be built. But Brentwood Borough Council are about to give what we think will be a no, a, a, planning, uh, a planning decision uh, based on the green belt being sacrosanct. It's an automatic no, and it's, it's beyond common sense. And presumably that kind of stranglehold, that kind of, um, um, sort of entrenched thinking is holding us back. Is something else holding us back? Do the developers want there to be a sudden glut of housing on the market? That would drive prices down. Isn't that the last thing they want? That, that's definitely true. So there are two things holding things back, and it's not the old kind of rehearsed mantra around the planning system. That's pretty broken, but it's not that. One of the problems is the NIMBYs, people that go to their local councillors on every planning application that's slightly contentious, and they say, we don't want this in our backyard, literally. But it's a good point with regard to developers. So something like 70% of all homes in Britain now are built by the top 10 house builders, the big PLCs like Persimmon and Bellway and Bovis and so on. They have a job to do at the behest of their shareholders, which is to make sure they maximise shareholder value. That means that they drip feed out their plots based on how well the market's doing. So, mm. of course, if they were to develop all 700,000 of what they call their land bank right now, yes, you're right, that would drop prices and that wouldn't be good for shareholder value. Now, rather than just living with that and saying, OK, well, you know, we're just going to have to be at these uh, the behest of these house builders, government needs to think about a different solution where perhaps we take some of the house building in this country 
shock horror, away from those major house builders, perhaps even do it themselves as a government so mm. that we can get round that bottleneck, that obstacle. See, the more you talk about it, the more it makes sense. And in these target seats, they're London seats. And, and we all know that the huge, huge barrier. I bought a house in the 90s in, in West Norwood for 90 grand. You'd be hard pushed to get anything for under half a million quid now. Mm. Salaries haven't really gone up. In fact, in journalism, the starting salary is pound for pound, more or less identical. Yes. So, so we're not having the buying power. You can see why this would land well, especially with young professionals who can't even dream of getting on the property ladder. And, and it will do, but obviously it would take a while for this to filter through, uh, for it to uh, not just meet the needs of people that want to buy a home. But of course, this has an effect on social housing, affordable homes and so on. Um, and, and look, one other thing that I found quite remarkable on Twitter this morning, the amount of people that say, well, it's all because of immigration. That's the problem. Look, mm. We can argue about immigration being out of control so the cows come home. It is. I accept that. But this problem of inadequate housing has lasted for decades, way, way before people started coming over to Dover on, uh, on, on small boats, frankly. So it's not just that that's the problem. Um, there are solutions to this. I'm just not sure that governments otherwise are listening. Let's maybe hope that Keir Starmer does actually execute on this and start grabbing the ball by the horns and thinking about Greenbelt as something that needs to perhaps be a little bit compromised. Superb, Russell Quirk. Mainlining common sense. It will never catch on, mate. Thank you very much for coming in to the studio.